so ACTOP was born in 1987 in New York and a little later in other places and countries. It was out of the homosexual community. There was there was two there were two tendencies at this time. One to universalize the virus as the coronavirus is. One was to address to the community that was the most touched, the most invisibilized, the most stigmatized, the most rejected by uh, by the by the larger communities. You know, uh, for instance, to quote one of the act of activists of that time, Vito Russo, he said like that living with AIDS was living through a war which is happening only for the people who happen to be in the trenches. So it was as if, at that time, as if there were people who went through this epidemic without knowing anything about it, you know? So really ACT UP was addressing the people who were involved in the epidemic. And it was an association that was actually an organization that was trying to make links about the inaction of a certain number of instances, like the governments, the health services, the laboratories, in trying to find a treatment. And because of the main target was that, what it was to put treatment in our body, as ACTUP said, you had to target all the instances that was, that was not doing it. It was turning your anger into, into power and into uh, grief and also into action. You know, there was this big, big meeting in Denver and a little number of people said, you know, you cannot discuss about us without us. We are not victims. We are not passive. We're not patient. We're not patients. We are people with AIDS. It was saying that knowledge is not the property of the people who have the power, the doctors, uh, the researchers, the governments, whatever. We are in the, we have to be in the same relation to knowledge. We are in the same relation to knowledge than uh, the people who detain supposedly the knowledge, who don't have any knowledge. And it's exactly the same thing with the coronavirus. It's, it's a problem of sharing knowledge. It's a problem of democrat, democratizing knowledge. You know, we are totally infantilized. You know, the, our president is addressing us as if we are children and we are not behaving properly. And this is how, you know, and this is why, of course, what the, the AIDS community has had to confront at the time was silence. It, here we are confronting a certain number of silences, but we are also confronting this incredible, you know, showing off of a knowledge that people actually don't have. And so... What I wanted to stress, you know, in ACT UP, you know, we have the idea, we have the image of an activist group going in the street and zapping and demonstrating and throwing blood. And that was part of the, you know, of the movement. But the other part of the movement was the quantity of texts you had to read. And you know, I, I still know um, people who are involved in AIDS organization who continue right now with the coronavirus to read everything and, in, you know, to also to try to make the difference between what is, um, you know, knowledgeable news and fake news, for instance. And I see that tendency to reread everything and to know in order to share that knowledge with other people. And these questions are absolutely crucial in what we're living now. What is proximity? How can I be safe? And you be safe with me, etc. These are, but you can't, I mean, this is a way to address, of course, uh, the, the pandemic, the epidemic. But it's true that the, the, the everything that was uh, called and is still called at the time civic disobedience and activism in the street was something that was important for many reasons, because suddenly your body became information also, you know, there was a lack of information. And suddenly uh, the notion of risk, as you're saying, is also making your body an informant, information. And this is also something we're lacking right now, although we have other tools to communicate with our bodies. So it, we have to think about other ways to confront this risk, other ways, other ways to disobey, other ways to make our bodies 
what whatever our bodies are visible in my book i wrote a whole chapter is about what did, what were the technologies that we had at the time where well, we had television which was a crucial problem because you had to make an anti television to contradict what was said on television the telephone we had the uh, the fax we had uh, of course the uh, you know mechanical reproduction and photocopy and we could use that so it's very simple you know to in order you 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 can actually have an action by going in the streets but you also can have an action as you say by using your telephone when when you're 100 and you're just calling and calling and calling and calling the same uh the same you know um terminal um it really 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 makes a big difference you, you know there was a turning point i think with the article by Douglas Crimp he was saying you know, we can't continue like that to think that, you know, anger, action, anger, action. We we are not heroes. We are vulnerable bodies. We are vulnerable uh, communities. We are in pain every time we have a friend who dies, every time we have a friend who becomes sick, every time we lose a friend. We are meeting so many mournings and losses and griefs that we have to be recognized our vulnerability and what touched me even more about his discourse was the fact that he was saying you know as a gay man he was saying i also have to reconsider my own desires we have to reinvent the practices that we cannot have again that we cannot have anymore like if you know he was very simply talking about swallowing cum okay he said this has become impossible uh so we have to mourn we have to be in mourning of these practices these affects our pleasures or this what made our community we have to reinvent it and of course it resonates so much in what we are living now you know people are beginning to say it won't be anymore we don't won't have a number of things anymore we should really think about that and about the fact that we are also vulnerable to that and instead of pushing that away and saying i have to go to action i have to be an act, be a good activist i have to be a hero i have to deny all that you have to accept it and to make a new world with it you have to reinvent these practices you have to reinvent a world with these losses i think